Hello, my soccer universe. The Aussie Bundesliga definitely started with a bang yesterday. We had, after four games, four goals per game. It went down then yesterday because they have only two goals scored in two games, but there were quite some significant results. And we already have two teams in crisis after just two games being played. However, there's a little bit of a preamble as well because you have to take the cup games and the European games into account as well. We'll mention those these teams a little bit later, just pointing to them right here. Most importantly for me, Lask got a win to start the season at a tough opponent in Hartberg where they rarely actually pick up three points and overall look good. But then also you almost threw away a game that you had in the bag. At least the defense is scoring and the goalkeeper is still one of the best goalkeepers in the league, if not the best goalkeeper. And I still don't understand why he wasn't called up for the Austria squad. <laughs> Let's start with the opening game in Graz. Newly promoted GRK taking on the favorite Salzburg and it started perfectly for Salzburg. The four minute Rosenberger puts in an own goal. Yeah, the season started with an own goal. And then just a couple of minutes later, Nene with a brilliant dink over the goalie from a very acute angle. Makes it 2-0 and you thought, oh, GRK is not fit for this league. A little bit like we said for Blauweiss last season, who were totally outclassed. However, they came back and scored a brilliant goal to cut the lead in half. Vucic plays it over to Lang, who with the outside of his foot from the edge of the box gets it into the far corner up brilliant goal probably already the goal of the season what a brilliant goal and then Vucic just eight minutes later it's 2-2 so out of nowhere Salzburg looked like they were cruising and then Gerka packs it back and then the game was relatively open and it's decided on a penalty just before the halftime. It was a handball and Konate converts the penalty. Second half then did not quite live up to the action that we saw in the first half. But what a start to the season that was, especially the first half. And yes, Gerka proved that they can come back. But also what I have to say that Salzburg serious questions have to be asked, especially defensively. They are playing now against 20 in the Champions League qualification and, you know, there are some worries. Offensively though, they look quite well. Now to the first crisis team in Altach. They lose at home to Tirol and if you watch my preview, I said Tirol is probably the team that I would pick for relegation. Well, they actually didn't look that badly, but Altach, who thought they had done good business getting in strikers to address their uh, goal scoring woes from the past season, they didn't really solve that problem and they really didn't look good. In the 8th minute, Lawrence gives Tirol a lead that was over probably even the good lead. Yes, Altach probably could have equalized at one point as well. They get equalized in the 74th minute and you really thought maybe they're gonna push on now for a win. But Blume, just a few minutes later, re-establishes the lead for Tirol. And Altach lose the first game of the season at home against a team that you thought you would win. After the game, sporting director Kirchler came out and actually criticized the coach already and said, yeah, we're gonna make a decision relatively soon. We have to see. So Standfest is not in a good position there. There was a point made that, you know, which players did Altach actually get? They got players from the relegated team from the past season and thought they will improve it. So, you know, it's all not quite well in Vorarlberg, that's for sure. However, a big win for Tirol. And then we're already at the Lask game, who again played in pink in Hartberg, which I didn't do all last season. I guess it's because the goalie Laval could only play in yellow. That's why Lask had to play in pink. Really weird stuff. Really, really, really weird stuff. Lask fans actually boycotted again for 90 minutes and 8 seconds and they came in with signs that we have to ban pink. I'm wearing pink just because Lask played in pink, not because I have major support for that. Although I have to say the yellow sleeves bug me more than the pink jerseys. Hey, whatever it is. In any case, I think Lask overall, especially the first half, played quite well. Had Hartberg under control. Hartberg is a really tough opponent, especially for Lask, who is also an opponent that likes to play and can create troubles for many players. And yes, they have a really tough opening schedule, so they might actually be lower in the table at the, at the beginning, but I would expect Hartberg to perform well this season with Shop coming back as well. 
So dominating them for the first 15 to 20 minutes was actually quite pleasant to see Uzo hitting the post in the 8th minute already and there were a couple of more chances. However, Hartberg then came back into the game. Great shot by FDI where Laval had to make a good save. There were also a couple of others. In the end then it's after a corner kick where the ball is played out comes to Berisha who crosses it back in and Tiaz has it in the 29th minute. Lusk get the go-ahead goal. Then I actually thought they had again the upper hand, probably could have made a second one, but then, you know, I think it was well reflected, the one nil lead. Second half, you get the second goal, Bocharde, the nephew of Winston Bocharde, makes it 2-0 after a Schul free kick that was really poorly parried by Salinger. But then, quick some changes by Hartberg, while they were checking the goal where there was an offset, there was none. And it actually caused some trouble for us, because within a few minutes, 61st minute, Prokop reestablished lead after Bello made a, a mistake playing it out. Filofa then plays it to Prokop who makes it 1-2 and Prokop had then also a pretty big chance to equalize where it was a long ball that he nicely controlled and Laval made a great save. On the other side, you know, I always thought that Lars could make a third one to kill it off but yes, they killed it off in a way but maybe not the best way possible. It's a win at a really tough opponent and that's the positive I take from that and yes maybe we need to work a little bit more on getting games home a little bit more safely. The evening game on Saturday saw Wolfsburg completely destroy Klangfurt and yes both teams are from Kärnten so this is a local rivalry. However Didi Kübauer already with Lask had a good record against Klagenfurt now he continues that with Wolfsburg. This was built as kind of an even matchup in a way. No there was nothing like that. Or in the 11th minute, Balio converts a penalty. And then 10 minutes later, Piesinger makes it 2-1. And Zukic a few minutes later, then 3-0 at the halftime. The game was done, done and dusted. Baumgart in the 78th adds a fourth. And then only Dale avoids the route for Klagenfurt. But yeah, overall, this was not pretty from Klagenfurt. Klagenfurt is going to probably face a tough season. I thought they might be better. And I still have some trust in Coach Puckle. But they lost a lot of good players. This is relegation fodder at the moment. I mean, if that performance continues but then one shouldn't take too many conclusions from the first round that's the one thing i really want to stick by let's wait at least a month how this is going maybe even two months before we make any big conclusions of where this season is going And I would recommend this sentiment especially to Austria Vienna who are already in crisis mode because they got ousted by Ilves Tampere in a crazy match on penalties at home where they just couldn't hold on three times to the two goal lead that they needed. That really hurt them and it didn't help that you had to play a long extra time period that was very intense plus a penalty shoot then the downer and now you have to open the season at against Blauweiss Linz who are kind of with fresh legs as well and come with the high from a really comfortable cup win as well and Blauweiss really started with a bang I mean very early on they probably should have scored after corner how this went onto the crossbar not in still beyond me however Austria then controlled the game created some half chances but not really much but you had the feeling that if the game continues this way the class of Austria will show through here however to his credit coach Schadlener made some changes at the halftime he went from four to three on the back and then suddenly took the dangers of Austria Vienna away and they had again another big chance to open the scoring early on in the second half that did not happen but in the end they got the go-ahead goal when their goalkeeper Schmidt makes a long ball onto Seidel in the 79th minute he, he makes it 1-0 even more damning is because most teams know that Bravo Linz can do exactly that so you have to avoid this Seidel of course came on for former last player Goinginger who was also former blau player so he's coming back there who did not have the greatest of games in any case it's 1-0 blau Linz and the alarm bells at Austria Vienna are already ringing Austria Vienna had one glorious chance to equalize when Cristiano from the edge of the box lobbed it over the goalkeeper however Anderson then with a bicycle kick scraped it off the line it may have been in, there was no conclusive angle and so it ends with a 1-0 win for Blauweiss Linz and Coach Helm at Austria Vienna is already in serious, serious trouble of getting fired that early on because out of the conference league now losing the first game again. Don't draw early conclusions, give coaches time. That's the most important thing. However, we know that Austria Vienna is not a place where you would expect calm heads. 
And then the big one to start the season. Rapid had actually already a really good start to the season. It has to be said. The way they went over Wisla Krakow in the Europa League. Yes, it's only second league team in Poland. But this was super convincing. And they played some great stuff along the way as well. I mean, blow somebody out by five goals in the first half. Any team. Especially second league team who will probably sit tightly defensively. That was really impressive, I gotta say. And I think overall, Rapid have done great transfer business this year around. And I think they might be a force to be reckoned with in this season but you know last season they also started well they beat Sturm Graz the reigning champions in the first game 1-0 which was huge for them because you know at the end of the last season they lost three times in a row against Sturm Graz twice in the league and then already in the cup final so there was something brewing there and they really needed that win the game though, I mean, as much as Rapid came out storming, Sturm Graz also had their chances and it was a very level first half where a intercepted ball is being played by, I think, Seidel to Burgstaller, then plays it over to Bellio, who makes it 1-0. A very nicely played goal. And while the 1-0 lead probably was deserved overall, it was a relatively even first half. However, in the second half, Rapid was all over Sturm Graz and probably should have scored more than the one goal. Burgstaller seemingly had scored the second one, it was called for an offside. Then late on, I think in stoppage time, they probably should have made a how Three chances did not go in from close range. It's still beyond me, even if the goalkeeper was out. Overall, I think Rapid really deserved the one. I'm not so worried about Sturm Graz. Again, I think Rapid had to start the season early because they had to play in Europe. Sturm Graz is already qualified for the Champions League league phase. Therefore, they are probably not as much in a flow yet. It's also now more or less confirmed that one of the best players from the last season, uh, Pras, is probably leaving them as well. So they still have to find themselves. And yes, they played against a Rapid team that was in a really good shape. <laughs> And so we can already look ahead to the next weekend. Yeah, first game of the season at home, last against Altach. Yes, it's kind of convenient that Altach is coming, although, you know, <laughs> I don't like teams in crisis all that much. I'm very excited because for once I will be going with my brother that lives in Spain. He has not seen the stadium, so I'm really excited to go with him to show him the new stadium. That will be fun. We have actually not that many interesting fixtures. I think the biggest one is probably Sturm Graz against Hartberg, the Sestirian Derby. I think also Austria Wien against Wolfsburg could have something riding on it as well. Last time that blau Linz went to Salzburg, they won. Have that in mind and then VSG against GRK. That should be a relegation duel, but you know, let's see, let's see. Maybe one of these teams, if not both of these teams, can surprise us. So that was it for me for round one of the Austrian Bundesliga. I think it was overall quite an enjoyable round. Even the two games that did not produce that many goals were actually quite intense and interesting watching and yes i was double screening with the olympics of course because that's how i roll please let me know in the comments below how you like the games give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video i'll talk to you soon about more things in my soccer universe bye hey there i really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too also please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.